Gold and oil snapped back their last Friday advance as tensions in the Middle East didn't escalate as much as feared by investors during the last weekend. But sentiment remains fragile, obviously, as U.S. big technology and big oil companies prepare to reveal their third quarter results this week. So welcome to the new week of trading with Swiss Codes Daily Market Talk. We can't really say that risk sentiment is good this morning, but we can say that it could have been worse as tensions in the Middle East didn't escalate as much as feared by investors during the last weekend. Actually, Hamas released two hostages and humanitarian aid actually started to enter Gaza from the Egyptian border during the weekend. But but tensions remain extremely, extremely high, of course, as Israel stepped up its air race in Gaza and Hezbollah could drag Lebanon into war, it is said, and that would obviously spread tensions through the Middle East region. Now, the way the market and investors react to the news is mostly by seeking safety in gold. So gold spiked to $19.97 per ounce on Friday on fears that tensions in the Middle East would further escalate and it would just give way to further carnage in the Middle East. But as the weekend news were somehow better than expected, we see gold ease to $19.64 per ounce on Monday. But upside risks prevail. The next wave of safe haven flows into gold will likely push the yellow metal above the $2,000 psychological mark. Now, above this level, we actually start entering into a little-known region for traders because the price of an ounce reached $2,075 in August 2020. Then it tested $2,070 per ounce again in March 2022 at the wake of the beginning of the war in Ukraine. Then gold traded at $2,081 per ounce level in May this year. Therefore, the way is open for a further rise toward the $2,080 per ounce level, and the war in Gaza could give a reason to gold traders to make an attempt to a new high above the $2,080 per ounce level. Now, note, however, that as soon as tensions in the Middle East stabilize, and I don't say ease because there's a chance that we won't see peace return to the region in the close future, unfortunately. So, as soon as tensions in in the Middle East stabilize, gold will likely come under a decent, decent selling pressure as the US 10-year yield is now flirting with the 5% psychological mark, while the US 30-year paper now yields above 5%. So that means, in plain English, that the opportunity cost of holding the non-interest bearing gold has significantly increased since the start of the war in Gaza at the beginning of this month. And the negative correlation between the U.S. yields and gold clearly broke and it turned positive. Because interestingly, what we saw also is that the rising tensions in the Middle East didn't benefit to the U.S. Treasuries this time. So when it will be time for the markets and for investors to start depricing the war in Gaza, gold could feel like someone has pulled the rug from under its feet. But when will that happen is obviously the million dollar question for now. The risks remain tilted to the upside. Now, another interesting thing is that the rising U.S. yields don't benefit to the U.S. dollar these days. The U.S. dollar index has been stagnating since its October 3rd peak, so that also coincides with the beginning of the war in Gaza. Strong economic data and the Federal Reserve's officials' determination to keep interest rates high for long in the U.S. actually stopped feeding into the U.S. dollar, but a recent Bloomberg survey actually showed that economy Economists on Wall Street, they boosted their growth expectations for the U.S. for this year and for the first quarter of next year, which obviously does support the idea and the market pricing for higher yields because we have this higher for longer interest rates in the U.S. And due this week, the U.S. GDP growth is expected to double. I mean, literally double from 2.1% to 4.2% for the third quarter. So that's the fastest pace since the Fed started raising the interest rates in this tightening cycle. 
Does it sound too high to you? Well, look at this then, because Atlanta Fed's GDP now model estimate for real GDP growth at a seasonally adjusted annual rate in the third quarter of 2023 points at 5.4%. 5.4% growth in the US, in the US dollar terms, despite more than 500 basis point hike since a year and a half from the Fed, which didn't even bring the US economy close to a risk session, which was, remember, supposed to kick in sometime in the first or the second quarter of this year. But it didn't happen. And here we are today in the fourth quarter, and we are talking about a US growth of around 4 to 5%. So let me tell you this, no one, no one including the Fed and Jerome Powell himself can say what the heck is wrong with the US economy's response to the Fed's monetary policy tightening. Because some believe that it is the pandemic disruption that's interfered with the economic theory. Others blame it on the US government's massive spending program, which certainly explains why the US yields keep rising at the current speed despite the softening Fed expectations. But it's clear that there's something that goes against the general and the usual economic theory in spending and growth figures in the US. And well, you know what? That's tant mieux for the Federal Reserve, who would happily take a soft landing response from the US economy if, of course, inflation eases. But it's not sure that we will see inflation ease easily from the actual levels because you know, the spending and the growth numbers remain too strong, and that would mean further monetary tightening in the US and further positive pressure on the US yields. So, I'm trying to say that the US dollar's reluctance faced with such a rapid rise that we see in the US yields is obviously a bit astonishing because the economic data remains strong, and while well, the economic data released elsewhere is not necessarily that optimistic on top of it because the European growth engine, Germany, is a big, big victim of the energy crisis and fresh manufacturing and services PMI data due tomorrow could hint at a slight improvement in the European numbers, both for manufacturing and services sectors. Yes, yes, but the numbers are still expected to remain in the contraction zone for the eurozone in general. So the euro dollar tested the 106 offers last week to the upside and that despite the weakening European Central Bank expectations but obviously that has to do with the unexplainable uh, softness in the US dollar across the board. Now, the European Central Bank is expected to hold its interest rate steady when it meets this week on Thursday after a 450 basis point hike since last July. Now, I don't think that the ECB chief, Kristen Lagarde, will call the end of the policy tightening at the ECB. She will probably remain cautiously optimistic that they are also approaching the end of this monetary policy tightening tunnel, but that they must remain very, very careful, especially now that the boiling Middle East does threaten to aggravate the energy crisis in Europe into just another winter of limited energy supply due to the Ukrainian war that is still going on at full speed even though we don't talk about it every day. And speaking of energy, the barrel of US crude traded past the $91 per barrel level on Friday's trading session, but smashed back below the $88 per barrel level this morning as tensions in the Middle East happily, happily remained softer and easier than what investors expected and feared into last weekend. But keep in mind that upside risk prevail. In the equity space, well, the S&P 500 closed last week more than 2.5% lower and below its 200-day moving average, and that was obviously on the back of limited risk appetite due to the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Nasdaq also fell below its past year's ascending base. Sentiment in the market is obviously morose, but focus, investor focus, will still be on a big wave of early Earnings that will hit the news wire this week, along with the geopolitical tensions, and help equity investors to think about something else than the geopolitical tensions and the war in Gaza. 
Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, Intel, ExxonMobil, and Chevron. Those are the companies that are due to report their third quarter earnings throughout this week, and investors will be watching them. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipeko Skardeshkaya, and thank you for joining me, and thank you for all your supportive and interesting messages. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful, and it has been insightful to you. So please please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions, and your questions below as usual. And follow us on Instagram, on X, and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. And subscribe, of course, to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please do not forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy these videos. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.